some of the stretch glass sort of sticks out a little bit. Yeah, I'll, re I'll replace it. Someday I'll replace it. All right. Uh, if you want. <laughs> I mean, it's, I'm just going to start talking, you know, it's like, here I am. Would you stop? We would all like to introduce you to the wonderful, mm. oh my God. very knowledgeable, thank you for coming and finally finding what room he was in, because it wasn't the one that I had, Tom Burns. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I'm, I, I, I get here Wednesday night, and it's all quiet. So I get up yesterday, and I go, on, how the hell is that? I'm just going to go antiquing. So I, I figured I'd go down to Williamston and uh, Levinston and up to Saginaw, and then 8 o'clock, the uh, mall down and Mommy closed. So I said I'd make a day of it. I get to the first one, and of course, Ingrid's already in there buying something, and Betty's out there, and... Betty's, I'm leaning over to the pasture side talking to Betty. She says, well, I brought my Millersburg Raisin Ribbons for your talk tomorrow. And I looked at her, I said, oh, yeah, I got a talk tomorrow, don't I? <laughs> I said, well, it's, I'm glad it's not today because I wouldn't be there. So, yeah, I didn't, I forgot I was going to have a talk till 9 o'clock yesterday morning, whatever. Oh, well, that's what happens when I, luckily I'm busy. So I, you know, keep forgetting stuff like that. Anyway, here a couple years ago, we, were, uh, we always have at the New England Carnival Glass Convention, we have that the first weekend following Brimfield Flea Market in September. And I had had discussions with people on this yellow glass. And then what we do is I'll come in from the fields on Friday, and then we have like a little, they, they have that stump time. Yeah, well, they all bring stuff in that I've never seen before. I wouldn't have a clue what it is, and, you know, I'd try to pretend like I know something about it. Well, anyway, we started yapping about Vaseline. We probably had one of the best talking jam sessions that I've ever had with glass, you know, because it was interesting. It kept going for a while. It was pretty interesting. And, and, and there's a couple guys down in Kissimmee, Florida. I, I set up at the... Uh, Florida Mount Dora Renninger's Flea Market, which is luckily in a couple weeks I get to go to Florida and set up at this flea market while Bob and Bob come up there and Roberto was the past president of the Vaseline Club, the National Vaseline Club. So I get yapping at it and uh, the yeses and noes, the pluses and minuses of Vaseline. So I thought to myself uh, that would be a very good topic of a, of a talk. So here I am doing the talks on Vaseline. I'm no expert as far as, you know, the, the chemicals and all that in it. Some of the patterns I don't know and all that, but what we, what we tried to distinguish is what is true Vaseline uh, and what is not. So luckily, luckily everybody else reads the newsletters and keeps on top of Max and everything, and they were aware that we had a talk today. So people brought me plenty of goodies here. And, yeah. But anyway, the first thing we gotta realize with Vaseline, okay, it's not a petroleum jelly, okay, in glass. It's actual, it's a yellow glass. The key word there is yellow. Because the main additive in Vaseline is uranium oxide, okay? And I think this is the way it went. I think. Uh, if you're aware of like the old sandwich glass that was made in the New England states there in the early 1800s. <coughs> well, they had, they came up with this yellow glass, but guys working in the glass company were getting sick because they were being exposed to radiation. And I believe something like early, as early as the 1820s or 1840s, the U.S. Con uh, Congress regulated how much uranium could be in a piece of glass. So now you see trace amounts. And trace amounts will let it fluoresce like this. But back in the old days, there was like lethal, lethal quantities of uranium oxide in this stuff. And all these guys were getting sick. If you ever come up to my hometown area in upstate New York, 
the Corning Glass Museum, the best glass museum in the world, the best library in the world, if you've ever had the chance to ask Bill Heacock. There's all sorts of wealth of information in this place. But if you go through their science, um, science area, there, you'll come up to like a little glass uh, shield here and everything, and then behind there is this huge piece of Vaseline glass, and on the other side is a Geiger counter. And you can see the Geiger counter, you know, uh, emitting, show the, the emitting of the uh, radioactive waves on it. It's pretty interesting that, to see this thing just a clicking with a piece of Vaseline glass. So there is some, you know, it's, you, nowadays you can eat off it, you can drink out of it, it's not going to kill you. A few years ago I probably couldn't have said that, but, <clears throat> but ba basically what we want to tell you is that the Vaseline stuff had to be a true piece of Vaseline, it has to be yellow. Um, the lime green as we know, that greenish looking Vaseline will fluoresce because it has uranium oxide. Red glass will fluoresce because it has uranium oxide. The cut glass collectors, the old uh, brilliant cut pieces of American cut glass will fluoresce under a black light because of the impurities from the factory and everything. But you get the reproduce, you know, the reproduce cut glass, the new laser cut and everything, it will not fluoresce under a black light. So there, it helps you to age or to date things. Um, and you know, there's, uh, I don't know, there, I'm trying, I wish somebody had brought a piece of red. We don't have a piece up here. But anyway, uh, but you can, you know, the typical thing, turn off your lights, get one of these guys that Ruppel was nice enough to give me and go around and see, you know, like the white lint and things that, glow and everything. And you can sort of see which items of yours contain uranium oxide, but because it can't contain uranium oxide does not mean it's Vaseline. Everybody said, well, I got a piece of Vaseline. Eh, it's not, it's green, you know. You go into these displays at antique shops, you'll see all this green depression glass under a black light and this, you know, rare va uranium glass, Vaseline. Well, it's not. So Vaseline has to be yellow. <laughs> in fact, if anybody's interested in Vaseline, they do have a National Vaseline Collectors Club. Uh, next July 7th, 8th, 9th, uh, the weekend after the 4th, uh, in Indianapolis, the glass, there are a bunch of glass clubs getting together and they have a mega convention. The Mount Washington Club, the uh, uh, Wavecrest Club, the Cut Glass, the Early American Pattern Glass, Salt Shaker Collection, the Vaseline Club. All these clubs come together in Indianapolis. We have an antique show at the State Fairgrounds. On Thursday night is a mega glass auction, which the licensed auctioneer in Indiana is going to do. And then the Vaseline Club on Sunday and Monday is going to have their convention at the same location. And on Monday, I'm going to have an auction of Vaseline for them. So if anybody's interested, that uh, weekend of July, just keep track of my calendar and we'll, we'll let you know. <coughs> now, in, in this type of glassware, we have pretty much three eras. We have the Victorian. I've always considered Carnival glass to be the last of the Victorian. It's the last of the handmade glass. And then right after that started depression glass, which was machine made. So your carnival glass is pretty much the last of the, of the handmade stuff. But you get, you get to the uh, things prior to 1907 with the, uh, such as this piece here. We'll just start up here. This is, no, this is very common. Just about every antique mall has one of these bowls in it. So if you want an inexpensive piece of Vaseline as an example, this uh, fluted scrolls, tri-cornered uh, <coughs> candy, which from the rim on the inside, it's probably the sugar, sugar bowl whimsy down into a, a candy jar. It's not really a whimsy because it was just an, um, you know, they did more than one thing with a certain mold and utilized it and, you know, made more money that way. But look at this thing. I mean, yeah, not too much. Uh, not too much of a change of that, 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 I mean, it just reacts like crazy. But this stuff was made in the early 1900s. The, um, 
English glass makers that worked for Webb and Stevens Williams, such as Northwood and the Fenton Brothers, and, and uh, what's his name? Uh, Frederick Carter from Corning. They all came over with their knowledge and then they uh, started up what they did with the European Victorian age, with our Victorian age, here in the turn of our last century. Um, let's see, you know, Victorian, we, have the, we don't have the pump, but we have the trough, which came first, the, wa the water or the horse. In this case, the water. We have, um, again, these are made by Northwood, early 1900s, again, fluorescent like crazy. Then you even have your non-opalescent stuff, your <coughs> pattern glass that was a little earlier even, <coughs> back, it could be from the 1840s, 1860s, 1880s. And this is a little hat-shaped toothpick holder, Daisy and Button. A number of companies made these, old and new. But how simple a piece, a little yellow piece like that, and look at the display you can have, with just simple, you know, $10, $15 items. It doesn't cost you a million dollars to do this stuff. And, uh, and, uh, and uh, the use of the black light, unlike when I was a kid with the, you know, psychedelic bedroom set, yeah, you know, how we all, uh, every kid wanted a, they wanted a lava lamp and a black light. Uh, I didn't care for the lava lamp, but I thought black lights were pretty cool. Um, let's see now, I wanna go through the Victorian here. But basically, I'm trying to also look, there's, yeah, this one now, if you look here, it's got a green base, so it's not Vaseline. Doesn't matter if it glows or not, it is not Vaseline. And as we see, it does, has a good amount of uranium oxide, and it's only $49.50, so, um, just kidding. Well, these are Stevens Williams, I believe, with the little riggery around here. They have the little salts, and they had these little salts and uh, little silver plate holders that they had. And uh, actually, this one's signed Germany. That's different. But they're, they're cute as all get out, very collectible. But I just wanted to show that some of this is not on uh, yellow base glass. Now, here's another piece. This is... Uh, Oh, this is interesting. Whose is this? Yeah, I like that, because you even have the register mark on the bottom. And usually, um, a lot of your sour bee stuff is registered embossed with the, the sea serpent with a little diamond with the register mark. This one's etched in the bottom. And if you ever see an R in front of your numbers, that's the register number, European. But this is a real funky jack in a pulpit vase. And the R21329 is the register number here on the bottom. But yeah, this is, uh, <coughs> this is either, uh, this is probably Stevens Williams. I believe Stevens Williams was in Stourbridge, England. And at one time they had like 300 glass makers in this town. Yeah, I mean, that's where a lot of your European stuff comes. But boy, I tell you, again, very attractive and it doesn't cost a million dollars and you can have a heck of a display. Um, I know who, who made them? Yeah, I was thinking that usually these swirls are, are uh, imperial. These are not imperial, I don't believe, though they could be. I'm just not sure on this. But again, non iridized more in the elegant or depression era. But just look, look at the glow on these things. The, um, Desirability, what's nice about this Vaseline stuff is that you got you know, our collection, our people like it. You got, well, I mean, there's, there's just such a, 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 a flow of who collects this stuff. You don't have to like iridized glass. I know the Vaseline collectors, not one of them own a piece of Vaseline Carnival. Not one of them. They, they don't like the, the cover, the overlay, and the iridescence. <laughs> so they go with the nine overlay things. That's why you'd think they'd like some of the stretch or even something like that thin rib vase. But let me just go through um, this little cornucopia. I'm, again, I'm not sure who made these, but uh, very simple. Uh, 
just amazing how the, uh, the, the fluorescence on them, I don't even know if that's a word. Is fluorescence a word? Yeah. It is? <laughs> I learned something. Yeah, uh, Bart brought in this. When I sold Don Ruppels, we had a pair of these on the front cover. I thought they'd have brought more at the time. But, and I think in my for sale stuff, I have a big mid-size fine rib in Vaseline somewhere in my mess that I am being over inundated with. What the hell? Forgive the five or 10. Rustic, 15 hatch vase. Marigold Vaseline, Fenton. Very, very rare. That's not, that, we're, we're taking care of ourselves, aren't we? When we yeah, very, very rare. There they are. Yeah, they are. These, whose shelves are these? These shelves sturdy? They're pretty good. Okay, I just wanted to. <laughs> now, in, in carnival glass specifically, Probably the most, you know, uh, uh, most, uh, most, the largest manufacturer of, of the Vaseline would be Fenton. I, I, I think, I don't know what it was with Fenton, but they were as diversified and had more dang different colors and different shades of different colors than anybody. John Brett collected his mugs, and one time in Orange Tree mugs, he had 70 some different variations of color to an orange tree mug. You gotta really start searching when you're getting up to 70 some different shades of color. But the, uh, you know, let's see now, we got Imperial, Fenton, here's a Fenton Persian Medallion, Bonbon, bon. again, they made that. Frank Fenton once told me, he said we developed iridescence to hide our mistakes. <laughs> you know, all the bubbles, all the straw marks and all that, they spray the overlay on it and they all disappeared. I, I love that phrase that he told me years ago. But what I didn't get a chance to do with Frank was to sit down with him and, you know, all right, uh, you know, silicon or uh, selenium and, and all the carbon, all this stuff, all the chemicals that make things. I'm just so stupid about the chemistry of the glass. Well, I wish I'd talked and gotten more of an idea of what went into what to produce it. But it's uh, really quite you know, like I said, you can, you can go forever with this stuff. You can go with the stretch glass, the stretch glass, again, both Northwood and Fenton produced a lot of, uh, I, mean, it, I mean, there's just no beating the glow to some of this stuff as far as the uh, attraction and the, and I wouldn't know. This, this is sort of ugly. Uh, expensive ugly. That's like me. I'm expensive ugly too. Uh, oh, Kurt Vietti. Oh, okay. You know, yeah, he's not, he, it's not that he's proud of this. He just wants to make sure all you guys keep your mitts off it. See, so he's. Oh, we had a lot of them extra name tags. They work good at it. Yeah, I guess that. You can't put them on anything else. That's, that's, a, that's a dang pretty Vaseline bushel basket, though, Curtis, I will say. Is that Woody's? Okay. All right. Now again with the stretch, you have the Northwood little salt set here. Sign Northwood. You get the big one, the little ones. Again, I mean you can only show so much of this stuff under a black light. But um, the lowest and poinsettia. I don't know why they call this thing, what do they call it? Pond lily, water lily. There's a there's a lotus, just like the dragon lotus, and then there's a poinsettia. Just like a poinsettia. I haven't seen a water lily in one of these yet. But if you look at this thing, this thing's actually a little more green than it is yellow. But again, the fluorescence is there. But it's not as green as the other one that I have. Right, yes. Yeah. Well, that's the thing. So, see, a lot of that's taken away by the marigold overlay, sometimes detracts from it. <coughs> uh, somebody, I mean, depression green, if you see those big Stegen holly bowls and the dragon lotus bowls or a holly bowl and depression glean. They'll glow like crazy, you know, but there, but it's, it's, but like I said, you talk to the Vaseline guys, it's got to be yellow. We sort of, see in my brochures, I'll go lime green slash Vaseline. I cheat. Yeah, you know, I'm just sort of covering the bases, making sure the people that own it are happy with me and the people that are wanting to buy it are somewhat happy with me and 
Then some, yeah, somewhat, I did qualify that. And then when, I, when they call me, I'll say, well, it's more green. I'll, I'll qualify it that it's more green than yellow <coughs> because we want to stay with the yellow thing. But then you get um, even contemporary stuff. These, uh, the, the fish paperweights made in Fenton here. What are these, in the 80s, 90s? Look at that thing. I mean, they still, they, they still have that uranium oxide going. You can be what? Yeah, you can, you're two feet away from that thing and it's going. Just love it. Just love it. Then um, these are atypical of, of Vaseline and are collecting these uh, Northwood Thin Rib vases. Just go and flow and beautiful. But you know, there's um, red, yeah, reverse Amberina opalescent items like the little. Uh, I didn't have, we didn't have a black light last week down in Michigan, but um, <coughs> this one brought $550 or something last week, but the reverse Amberine Opalescent one brought like what, $1,450 or something last week. Did, I, I was quite pleased with last week's auction. Hint, hint, <laughs> you know. But yeah, I love these things. And uh, if you don't have these little lights, Galen in his room have the little pocket, white light, black light, little deals with a dang magnifier. What these people are inventing anymore. It's, if you want to go get one, they're probably a pretty cheap date and they'll help you out. Fenton acorn. What would you call that? Green. 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 Yeah. Lime More green. Lime green. Yeah. But there we go. So, you know, I mean, it's according if you want to be a purist or not. If you just want to, if you like the Vaseline guys and just want Vaseline, it's going to be yellow. But, uh, you know, we cheat, you know, because we like the glass. We're not really that picky. I mean, look at who your auctioneer is. You know, you're not that picky. So, you know, the, uh, but if it fluoresces, it sort of makes for a nice, nice uh, selection. Then, you know, every once in a while you get something that's sort of expensive, that's yellow, you know. I don't know, jeez, again, let's see, okay, what am I, three feet or plus away and he's glowing? Glow a little glow worm. <laughs> remember, remember that in high school? Did you ever sing that song? High school? Yeah, or grade school, whatever, high school, yeah, we we're, were all behind the times. <laughs> I never learned about, hey, I was a good boy though, I was 21, so I never did any of that stuff, so. Well, hey, I still have a 42-year-old track record in my high school, so you got to be a good kid to keep records like that. Either that or I just have a bunch of wussy, wussies in my hometown, which I, I tell them that too. I said, you guys are a bunch of wimps, my God. But anyway, the Mill Millersburg Raisin Ribbons. Not too bad, and some of these pieces of Millersburg, you gotta look real hard to see the yellow. This one's as obvious as, as anything. You know, there's just no, because I've had a whirling leaves or something years ago that, had, that was sort of on clear base, but it glowed like crazy. And uh, this thing don't like me, come on. But yeah, I love it. Razor ribbons, Millersburg items tend to be a little more expensive than your Fenton. I don't think you quite find as many of them, but boy, that sucker. There's your pearly dots, coin dot without a stippling. Again, more more green, yeah, but it'll, it'll fluoresce. And again, another piece of good old Fenton stretch. You, you're, they're topaz, as they call it. But you just, you can't hardly beat it. Now, they also make these a nice green stretch. They will glow like crazy too. I'm surprised no one brought me like a pastel swan or something. Because they're probably the most common item that is fluorescent. The little two fruits, that's a pretty cool piece though. With a little cross there, that's, that's, that's interesting. You don't see two fruits in Vaseline too often. That's a tough little pattern. Again, it's attractive as all get out. What's that? Swan? No, I don't need any swans. Now here, here, what are these? Like Summit or Mosser or somebody? Now, Mosser in Cambridge, Ohio, 
uh, reproducing on cake plates, all this, like the uh, cherry and cable Northwood pattern, you'll see in Vaseline opalescent stuff. Now, some of the, I can't remember who the manufacturer is, but one of the manufacturers, you look, you look at the piece, um, you know, 20 feet away, and it's that Vaseline that has that green glow to it. Like the real early pieces have that, just a green glow. And then you put your black light to it, it will not fluoresce. It looks just like Vaseline, but there's no uranium oxide in it, and it will not fluoresce. So you've got the opposite. You've got the green and the red and the crystal pieces that will glow. Then you have a piece that looks as Vaseline as anything, and it will not glow. That also tells you it's a reproduction. So if you ever see a piece of Vaseline and it doesn't glow, be very wary of it, okay? These bookends are sort of cute for contemporary. Hi, girls. How are you? Um, Holly Bowl. Holly Bowl and Vaseline. Again, oh, geez, some of that stuff just glows. Now, I had uh, New England, we had those Holly gob uh, compotes, and they were yellow. And they just glowed like crazy also. In fact, I had one in my room, and I figured you guys had me covered. Beautiful. And uh, see, that's the nice thing about, the one thing about Fenton glass, whenever you go to a market or something, you see a piece of Fenton, uh, it's a two-row open edge hat. Just grab it and turn it over. Look at the base color. Because <coughs> you never know how many of those Vaseline hats you can buy for 10 or 15 bucks, you know, because they think they're marigold. So here's uh, Northwood, Indiana, Pennsylvania, later made in Carnival by Dugan, your beaded panels, uh, non iridized Victorian glass, beautiful. In fact, Bill Edwards wrote a book on Vaseline. He has in there an epern. And the base of the epern looks just like the wide panel epern, but in, and when it comes up to the center, there's just one hole. There's not the three uh, lilies on the side. And you put the lily in there, and it's like a crimped edge pulled down lily. I bought one of those out in California. And these guys, the Vaseline guys, I think are buying it from me when I see them in Florida here in a couple weeks. But I'll uh, try to take a photograph. I, didn't even think about bringing it out here. Of course, I didn't know I had a talk to yesterday at nine. <laughs> Thank you, Betty Cloud. Sometimes I'm a real idiot, you know? But, you know, I'm real. Some, <laughs> Damn. Can't. Open the door. Yeah, well. Which, which Rose Bowl is yours, Kurt? <laughs> now, now you got, you got, now this is a conum, conundrum. There you go. I'm gonna mess this up so y'all have to figure out which one's yours, okay? Oh, you got your name? Not anymore. But we got, we got three horse head medallion rolls. This light does not like me. Is it a timer? Oh, it's got a timer? That's cheating. Yeah. Yes, ma'am. I forget, I, I remember who the boss of that family is. <laughs> yeah, I know. Well, here, you lost yours, so would you like some back? Them are gone. Yeah, well, Vaseline rolls, uh, marbles. Yeah, yeah. No, oh, look at this. Oh, I didn't even, it even has a tag, radioactive. Uranium oxide added will register on a counter and glow green under a black light. Absolutely safe to handle. Okay. Yeah. Do not intake. Yeah. Do not take unless the doctor's doing a scan on you and they want something to glow. I hadn't quite. I hadn't seen. I like the container as much as the marbles. Uh, another Stevens Williams. Yeah, this is, well, this is, oh, look at the opalescence on this, too. Yeah, nice. Yeah, that one, that one does tend to be a little more yellowy. But the, I've never, I don't remember ever seeing it with opalescent on the, on the riggery. Huh? Who's there Mine. I got a third one at home, too. I like the opalescence on this one. I very rarely have ever seen this opalescence. Very nice. Very nice. Uh, 
uh, European shades. They made a lot of these, and they're all really neat patterns. They're, they're, I don't know what they were smoking back in those days, but they did a heck of a job. It was good, yeah. But this one, it's uh, I guess it would hang like this, yeah. Yeah, with the. I'm not. I've never seen this pattern in the shade, so I'm not really hemming and on. I just don't know what to heck to say about it, except that it's pretty cool and, you know, blown blown into a mold. I get the way they do this stuff. What was it? Opalescent hobnail. They were. They were. I've always wondered how they made the opalescent hobnail with the cranberry or the vast marina and all that stuff. And someone said that they took a plate and then they would cut the grooves or the bumps or whatever in the plate, put the glass on this plate and it would lay smooth. Then they'd take the hunk of cranberry glass, lay it on this plate and roll it like they do with the fret. And it would acquire the opalescence on the outside. I was thinking it was a secondary reheating process that produced the opalescence. And again, that was something that I would like to have gone over with Mr. Fenton because he'd have known a heck of a lot more about this than I would ever pretend to know. <coughs> now, this should be interesting. Here we have a piece of Dugan. That's the lime green, okay? Now, we've had Fenton lime green, and it glows. Ah, look at there. Here's a piece of lime green. Does not glow. No uranium oxide added. And Dugan did not add a lot of uranium oxide. You know, you'll see it on the pony bowls, the swans, you know, their ice green piece as well, but not a lot of their carnival glass pieces will flow, uh, glow under a black light because they just didn't ever, you know, add the uranium oxide. Blackberry two row open edge, again, they added to it, does a very nice job, fluorescing. Now next year I expect everybody to have a display in the room on Vaseline. See, okay, and then speaking of Dugan, with their stretch, these are not too easy to find. Your little thumbprint, what's the other word they use? What's the other pattern? Coin spot. Coin spot. Yeah, I like thumbprint better. Thumbprint compotes. That's why I've always called them tiny thumbprints. So, coin spot. You see this in blue, amethyst. You see it in peach opalescent by the millions, marigold by the hundreds of millions. Um, they made this in cobalt blue stretch, I believe. Amethyst stretch, <laughs> tough, now you're talking tough. And even these uh, ice green ones are tough to find. Mm -hmm. But here's uh, another piece from the same company that made that leaf ray nappy, but they added the uranium oxide to this. But it just displays so nice, this stuff. And then when you have the stretch glass, it doesn't disrupt the pattern. The pattern sticks out, but it's neat stuff. Put him right up there, front and center. Um, a couple more common pieces here. This is a Holly Sprig Millersburg. It's almost like it wants to be a hand grip. This was a Friday or a Monday piece. He's in a bad mood. Yeah, wow, he's either wanting to go to the bar or he came home from the bar. One of the two. But, you know, it cost them, what, pennies to make this? They didn't care back in them days. Boy, look at that thing glow. But, you know, today to go to a flea market or something and see this on a table, we might just stir a little interest. Again, you'll turn it over and look, you can see that yellow on the base. That's what you want to do. The Holly Sprig. I have not seen this bowl in Vaseline before. I've seen the compote. <coughs> but this is very cool, radium finish. Has a little jeweler's bead in there. Now this sucker, I saw this last night, sort of interesting. It's your Imperial, I mean it's your Morning Glory vase. And to look at it, you'd think it was Marigold. Again, you grab it, you take it, and turn it upside down, and you'd have to see that there's a little greenish, would you say green? Yeah, a little green to the base. Yeah, and then, yeah, oh boy, then boom, <laughs> it's like, but I like this one because it's such a dark overlay, the tips come out. I think that's, that's the coolest thing about this. We had a little, we had a little squatty marigold ripple last week bring $205. Gee, I wonder what this would bring. This, I bet you this would bring more than 200 bucks. Should, two and a quarter, two and a half, two and a half, 275, 300. <laughs> yeah, really. 
This one, guaranteed to hold cards. We have a Night Stars card tray bonbon. Great, great piece. Again, just from a distance, it just doesn't look like it would be much, right? And then pop goes the weasel. And there you go again. See, the, the thing about the Vaseline Millersburg, when it glows, it glows. Now, I'm, I've, been, I've been given a very, very fortunate opportunity in my crawling back in the auction ranks and everything. And uh, in 2016, I'm selling Galen and Kathy stuff at Heart of America. And first thing I told them, I want all your blue and all your Vaseline Millersburg. So I've already put dibs on some Vaseline Millersburg and stuff for Heart of America here in a couple years. So, I don't know, nice stuff. And you don't ever see these, uh, these, I mean, you just don't see this pattern, let alone this shape, let alone this color. <laughs> no, ye of little faith. There, I'll lay it down there, ye of little faith. Tumble ups. Yeah. Now, again, the Vaseline one looks yellow. From a mile away, you can tell it's a Vaseline one. You know it's going to glow. The ice green one, again, will glow just as much as this sucker. But, watch it. But, it, uh, of course, well, it's, these boots have been, oh, these boots, I'll tell you, they're all beat up. I've got a, the treads are going. Yeah. <laughs> I look like an elf. Yeah. Look at my little ears. You got. Can someone get rid of this front row for me, please? Mark, Mark, bouncer. Get. I don't have to get rid of nothing. I ain't getting rid of the hair. I'm not getting rid of this. This is for the Cancer Society, and when it gets long enough, I'll cut it. So that's for that. The boots, these boots are made for walking. I don't have, I don't have, my vehicle has 374,000 miles on it now. And I, ain't get, I ain't getting a new vehicle, I'm not getting new boots, I'm not getting new nothing. I do have one pair of pants that I wear. I'll wear them tomorrow at the auction, so. Just you guys, back off, back off. The whole bunch of you. Back off. Leave to, I ain't, there ain't a woman alive that can take me into a store and do nothing. Well, I was married for nine years. I had enough of that stuff. Good. Good. I just drove 10,000 miles after, after Poucher's auction. I, I didn't go to Poucher's auction because I had a five-year-old birthday to attend, which was much more important to me. My granddaughter turned five. And then that Sunday, I went and booked an auction in Catanning and took photographs of an ice blue funeral vase. The next day, I booked an auction in Virginia. The next day, I picked up glass in Tennessee. And the next day, I booked an auction in Lexington, Kentucky. So, that I forgot, yeah, I, I forgot about this seminar. You can go skiing with this. <laughs> you know what I could also do with them, too. Come here, stand, act like you're walking out the door. <laughs> Everybody picking it. I know, you guys are actually, this is a good side. <laughs> I guess they're just really bored and they don't have anything better to do. All you guys out that ever watch this in the future, blame, take a front row peek of the hecklers. All right, now the leaf, the leaf chain, uh, seven and a half inch bowl with your berry exterior here, again, how many have seen the nine inch leaf chain in Vaseline? All oh, these hands up, look at that, not one. Because I haven't seen that many of them, I think I've seen one. But that's something to look out for. Something such as a leaf chain plate in Marigold that isn't Marigold, that's Vaseline. Because they also made it in red too, which is a tough, you know, tough uh, hole to fill, that, ten in, or that nine inch leaf chain. But again, always look at the base color and don't ever listen to Kurt Vietti. <laughs> Lotus and grape. See, now there's a lotus. Okay, hold on here. Let me look at here. Jeez, that looks just like the flower in between the poinsettia on this one. This is lotus and poinsettia, people. This, 
I don't know who invented these names. Anyway, these are pretty tough. The Lotus and Great Bonbons. Very difficult to find in Vaseline. By golly, they just glow like crazy. Just got to love it. I sold one of these in California. I had one of these out in California. I forget what it brought. But these are the, uh, in fact, I saw one in the shop here. They, you do see these occasionally. <laughs> Your Imperial Miniature Morning Glory vase, which technically is parlor panel, but um, yeah, again, no overlay. Just a plain piece of yellow glass, but boy, when you put the light to it, what a nice display uh, it makes. Uh, the ice cream shaped uh, sailboat, ice cream shaped sailboat. If you, again, if you look up here, most of what we have is Fenton. And uh, they keep on glowing. Then you get something like this pebble and fan thing. There's a few of these, I guess, out in this color. Um, who made these? Lobotowicz. Who? Lobotowicz. It's Czechoslovakian. They've identified the factory. They made that, the Art Deco vase, the Seagull vase, yep. and the Giant Lily, Bulbous vase. And how do you pronounce it again? I can Le I can Sounds it. like... Uh, it looks like Lobotowicz. Lobotowicz. The yeah. well, we we'll, don't we'll know. Identify. Identify. I think it's pretty. Oh, this is the, yeah, it's a great vase. These are, are in the rarity category. I guess they made it in blue, marigold, and the Vaseline, correct? Oh, yeah, the no, no amethyst or purple type of thing. I don't know. They did, the Europeans did more blue than they did purple or amethyst. Like yeah, this is a tough little vase. Oh, green. And green, that's no right. Green. Yeah, no green at all. No green at all. Um, now, again, when we looked at the, uh, the little girl bookends or the fish, paperweight, now here's some imperial from the 60s. Uh, these would have been, these would have had a foil label on them, uh, but the zipper loop finger lamps, there you go. They're a satinized Vaseline, glow like crazy. So they, they, they made Vaseline back in the early 1800s, and they make it today. So it's, it's very, yes, it's very popular glassware. By the way, a little hint, if you ever see these zipper loop lamps, especially these mid-sized ones, and if, uh, remind me, I got this in my pocket there, so I don't wanna, I don't wanna leave with Don's uh, lamp. But if you put your finger about an inch up from the base, uh, the 60s, Carnival glass ones, marigold and smoke, uh, about an inch up on the inside bottom here will be the IG signature. So if you're ever, if you're ever just curious, if, I get, if it's a flea market early in the morning, oh that's right, I go to the flea markets early in the morning, I don't see one of you guys there. Uh, four, five, six in a while, her, she's dangerous. She's a very dangerous lady at flea markets. Of, yes, you, you, you are, you know, we're, we're the diehards, Janet. But no, you'll feel a little bump, and if you look at it, it'll be the IG signature. So that always, and then uh, uh, as another thing, if you ever look up in there and you see a little smooth spot, that's where someone took off the IG signature, because that's happened also. So, you know, just be, buyer beware. The, uh, and even Imperial. Now, this thing, look at that thing. You just bring it over, and it will fluoresce like crazy. But this is a Imperial Grape Tumbler with the greenish base. So see, this would be the one that I'd call Lime Green Vaseline. Because it's a lime green piece, gives you the effects of a Vaseline fluorescent item. So that's my story and I'm sticking to it. <coughs> Leave my damn shoes alone. These, Jesus. <laughs> I'm gonna sit on your lap. You don't behave yourself. They'll, they'll learn you. You gotta remember, hey, you know. Hey, I'll tell you what. In the winter time, the in the in the, in the winter time, they're good boots to have, though. Yeah, they re, they re, they reflect the water. 
especially from St. Charles. Time I'd be ashamed of you. Oh, whatever. <laughs> Enough. Jeez. Uh, another, again, more green, are we? More green. But the uh, ball footed grape and cables are tough also. I mean, they're very common, marigold, blue, all that. But you just don't see a whole lot that fluoresce. Um, I'm trying to think. Basically, what we were wanting to tell people, though, with this thing is, <coughs> you know, like I said, you get you, if you're going to start a collection and you want to start doing the Vaseline, long as you qualify it. Because you got, like I said, if you want it to be a pure, if you want to be a pure collection, you have the yellow stuff Vaseline. Doesn't matter if it's early, vintage, or contemporary, long as it's yellow. And then if you want to collect stretch glass, you have your Vaseline or Topaz stretch. The ice green is Florentine green for the most part. You got uh, your Victorian opalescent. You got, uh, I mean, if on a scale, one to ten, I would say that the Vaseline, well I just picked up 438 pieces of opalescent glass out in Fresno, California. 60 or 70 of those pieces were Vaseline opal. So that sort of gives you, you know, a, a blue opal, Vaseline opal, and all those colors. The, the, you're going to find a lot of cranberry, you're going to find a lot of green, you're going to find a whole mess of blue opalescent. But your ability to find the Vaseline is about, you know, another 25% of that that you're going to find. Um, there's not a lot more to say. These, uh, the, I, I very, very much appreciate y'all bringing something in for me so I don't look like a total horse's ass. There's, so. I've never heard of a punch bowl in Vaseline, is anybody? Uh, there, I was at... Uh, on my trip, I, do, I just love this trip. Every year, I travel to the, do the Fresno Club, and then I went, I picked up the 400 pieces of Opalescent in Fresno, 200 pieces of Carnival in Lodi, California. Went back, crossed Donner Pass. <coughs> if anybody knows Russell and Kitty and Bracco, oh, yeah. and if you ever have a chance to go to Reno, you look them up and you go to their house. It is absolutely amazing what they have in their house not just in Carnival and Stretch, but they collect Western advertising. He also collects Nevada souvenirs. He's got a collection of Nevada souvenir spoons. Uh, probably got every one, uh, every spoon that was made. But he had, then I went down to Las Vegas. This lady had 50 some pieces of Carnival. And I, uh, it was junk. I said, what are you gonna do with the rest of the stuff? She said, I'm gonna sell it. So I'm going back next year and I'm picking up like 40 pieces of blue decorated stoneware and Crocs, you know, she, but they were all from Greensboro, so I'm gonna try to have a auction in the, see, I got my Pennsylvania license now, so I'm gonna have more work in Pennsylvania. Yes, One more note, I was out at Millersburg at the uh, courthouse auction a couple weeks ago. Right. Went to John Kelly's house, you ever been there? No, no, I, I know John, but I've never he, been there. He dug up a lot of shards at Millersburg, bushel baskets full of them. He showed us a piece like that, of a lady's medallion lamp. And Vaseline. Vaseline. Ooh. Yep. Ooh. Well, you know, you know it, it's, it's all possible. You know, um, I mean, you go out, the guy that found this big fish bowl that, that's being sold tomorrow. Yeah, I went to a local auction in upstate New York and there it was. And it's, in my opinion, one of the most beautiful pieces of green Millersburg ever produced. And yeah, it's still out there. It's sort of scary to think, but there's still things out there. Yeah, a Vaseline lady's lamp. I'd have to put that one in. I couldn't sell that one outright. That would have to go into an auction. Yeah, yeah. Or while there's, I was, I was gonna say, I stopped at Brett Mokel's. Uh, he had a few things for me to pick up. I had to go to Springfield, look at some glass, came back to Kansas City, and I see the Feather and Heart water pitcher that we sold at Mid-Atlantic you know, years ago for Harold, or Harold bought it, I guess. And then um, who had the, was it Marie McGee or, who, or Marie Caps had the Hopstar and Feather punch base in Vaseline. You know, and all the dang cups that are around, there's never been a yellow cup. You'd think there'd be a yellow cup. 
But yeah, there's always those possibilities. I'm waiting for a grape cable punch set in Vaseline or something like that. You know, I never, can't ever say no. Um, any other questions, comments? I've probably bored you long enough. Yeah, but remember, if, if you're gonna collect Vaseline, it's gotta be yellow. Just because it fluoresces does not mean it's Vaseline. All right, guys, thank you, thank you.